Hey folks, Tim Miller here. And as we all know, um, things are getting more violent. There's an increase in mental illness. There's just an increase in pure evil. And this is something that breaks your heart. We heard the screams in the parking lot as we were parking or walking to our car. And uh, we saw the kid. Just do whatever you can to keep this monster behind bars. It is a crime so horrific that it's hard to put into words. The mother and her three-year-old son who were viciously attacked in a grocery store parking lot in the middle of the day. The boy didn't survive his devastating stab wounds. But police say they caught the alleged killer just minutes later with the knife still in her hand. We're discussing Bianca Ellis' arrest and bizarre arraignment with criminal defense lawyer Diane Minashi. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Webb. Thanks to Sidebar for good reporting. And it's definitely worth going over there and listening to that about this um, lady, Bianca, who took it upon herself not just to stab an innocent three-year-old and his mother, but also another lady, Caucasian lady. Now, I'm not suggesting this is racially motivated, but this woman is sick. And all I will say is if this is happening, now think, folks, middle of the day in Ohio, you're going to get groceries for your family. And now some sicko who had just stolen two knives from a thrift store begins stabbing your three-year-old and you. And what is amazing to me is I haven't really heard that much about it. It should outrage all of us. It should cause all of us to say, hey, what is going on? What's happening where this kind of thing can happen? And I think that the thing that's really troubling to me is that it's kind of happening all over. And it seems to be more and more that knives are used. And we're going to talk about why that's so important. But I will tell you, knives are scary weapons. They're silent. They're often concealed until the last moment. And if you don't know how to deal with a knife, you could definitely lose your life, as we saw with this three-year-old boy. And folks, I got to tell you that the days of not being alert and aware, I, I think I shared with you on one of my videos, this YouTube expert in uh, self-defense is telling people that you don't need to really worry about, you know, being alert and aware if you know how to defend yourself. Well, that's fine for, for him. First off, I don't believe that's true because the United States Secret Service, which I think has a little more uh, focused attention to protecting people. They maintain that situational awareness and being alert and aware is the, the most important tool, because if you see it, you can stop it. And in this case, we'll talk about the before, during, and after, but I also want to let you know that it's, it's kind of happening everywhere. Um, this next one happened in London. Notice he just stabbed someone on the tube. Look at the knife right there. Look at the knife right there. He stabbed somebody and was fleeing what they call the tube, the subway. Now, what do you do, Tim, if you're on <laughs> a subway car, in a subway car? What do you do if that kind of violence breaks out there? Well, folks, there, there's not a, a a lot you can do unless you have some training but what you can do, everybody can do, is pay attention, be alert and aware. And we'll get to that in a few minutes. But it seems like it, it it's happening across kind of everywhere. Um, this happened in Germany. An outdoor event. A man just started stabbing people. Now, he was ideologically motivated. He His whole goal, this was a in his eyes, a right-wing, anti-Islam, anti-immigrant situation, but he took it upon himself, again, with a knife. Notice how big the knives are to begin to attack people. 
And so as we see these kinds of events happening all over the world, uh, in the case of the first story where the three-year-old boy was stabbed, she just walked into a store, stole the knives, walked out. Now, she clearly has mental issues, clearly, or she is the devil himself <laughs> because you can't do what she did unless you're being driven by a demon or you are a very sick person. And by the way, in the arraignment, they had to hold the little boy's father physically because um, I can't imagine his grief. I can't imagine his sorrow after not being there to protect his child. And yet that's happening. So as we look at these events, as we look at them worldwide, you know, we tend to get focused on gun violence. Um, and let me just say this. Um, if you're a sick, demented, evil person, you can kill with a lot of things. And everybody focuses on a gun. But can you kill with a knife? Well, yeah, we just saw that. Can you kill with a vehicle? Oh, yeah, we saw that, too, uh, in the Christmas Day Parade Massacre um, in Illinois. We, we, we've just seen, can you kill with a bomb? Can you kill? So really the issue, folks, for us is there are a lot of tools that can be used to hurt us. How do we navigate this whole process? And so let's go back to the first one. The first one is, is very hard to watch. Um, I just want to run through this story we again. We in the parking lot as we were parking or walking to our car. And, uh We saw the kid. Just do whatever you can to keep this monster behind us. That's the dad. It is a crime so horrific that it's hard to put into words. The mother and her three-year-old son who were viciously attacked in a grocery store parking lot in the middle of the day. The boy didn't survive his devastating stab wounds. The police say they caught the alleged killer just minutes later with the knife still in her hand. We're discussing Bianca Ellis's arrest and bizarre arraignment with criminal defense lawyer, Diane Menashe. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Webb. Now I want you to notice Bianca Ellis's expression. She's facing a judge for murdering a three-year-old. Folks, that's why when people begin to say, oh, it's not that bad, it's not this, no, it, it really is. Now, what we don't know yet, we will, is was she an immigrant or did she have a history of mental illness or had she been arrested before and released by some judge who just didn't want to keep her in jail or, or, or. Here's what we know. Our security in the U.S., and I would submit in London and in Germany, and kind of everywhere where open borders have occurred, um, there have been countries that have intentionally sent in those in prison, those that are mentally ill, and the list goes on. And for some reader, reason, our leaders don't want to protect us from them, which means, folks, we have to protect ourselves. So let's look at a mom with her three-year-old. Now, I know many of you have lived that. I certainly have been in that position where not a mom, but a dad with a, with a three-year-old. And, um, you know, even with a security background, it's easy to get distracted by children. It's easy to focus on your grocery cart. It's easy to say, well, I'm, I'm almost to my car, you know, so I'm not really thinking about it. But, but here's what I know. This sick lady was intentionally focusing on them as a target, as a victim. Um, she pursued them, them, now get this, a precious lady and her son just trying to go about their life. She pursued them to kill them. Now, I want you to wrap your head around that because, folks, I'm not trying to be an alarmist, but this is happening more and more. Mental illness is skyrocketing in our country. Domestic violence is skyrocketing. Drug abuse, we've never had more of our own kids killed by drugs, fentanyl. I read a tragic story this week of a precious lady, lose, or a couple losing their 19-year-old daughter who took one fentanyl pill, thought it was a Percocet, 
took one fentanyl pill, actually wanted to be a doctor, and it killed her. And guess what, folks? The source of all that is coming from China. China is intentionally murdering our children through the cartels in Mexico. We're not doing anything to China. We're not doing anything to the cartels. And so guess what? The body count of Americans continues to rise. Now, why do I do this channel? Well, I do it because I care. I do it because I want good people to begin to think through the times we live in and to really step forward and say, hey, you know, I'm going to do things differently. So let's talk about, I could talk about all three, I could talk to you <laughs> in detail, but let's talk about defending yourself from a knife attack. If you noticed, the, the, she had two of them, the knives were about that big. And folks, I got to tell you, when I was in law enforcement, we often said we were not joking. It would be better to be shot than to be stabbed. The reason being, if you think of the the angle and the width of a knife going into internal areas, uh, organs, especially in your abdominal area, or even in your neck, or on and on, it, it it's much. Uh, there's a much higher probability that you could survive a bullet wound with with, with the round about that big, um, especially if you can get emergency care. So a knife is a worst case scenario. In law enforcement, we had what was called the 21 foot rule, meaning that if a determined person has any level of fitness and capability, when they get within 21 feet of you, even though law enforcement's armed, they can likely be on top of you and attacking you before you can stop it. Okay, Tim, enough of the great news, right? My purpose is not to scare you. My purpose is to get you to think about how, when these incidents play out, what can we do to affect um, the outcome of these incidents? Um, obviously, this lady was on that mom and her, her child before they knew what hit them. Um, and so we, we back up to the, let's talk about the before. Before the incident, you're coming out of a store. You notice this lady. You could not notice this lady. This lady was was very strange looking. Uh, facial expressions, according to reports, were she she had been uh, extremely bizarre in the thrift store that she s just stole two knives from. Um, and again, it goes back to if you're paying attention, what would you do if you saw a lady rushing out of a store with two big knives in her hands? Would you get involved enough to call police? Would you be thinking of warning others? How about that precious lady in the car? Hey, hey, watch out. Folks, uh, we, we live in an age where people would much rather take cell phones pictures than they would to actually get into the fight. And I'm going to tell you that that infuriates me because uh, I can't imagine burying my grandchild because some lunatic, uh, again, I'll, I'll get more um, information on Bianca Ellis, but the bottom line is she absolutely should not have been on the streets. And and so let's let's think about the before. If we're alert and aware if we're going, mm, that doesn't look right. Rather than being distracted by our three-year-old, I know that's natural. But folks, you know, when I was traveling in Africa in, in certain parts, we were warned, hey, th <laughs> this is lion country, or, you know, th there could be uh, predators, tigers all, all around. So be aware. Well, guess what? When you really think that's true, you are aware and alert because there's nothing that will stalk you faster than a lion in the middle of a kill, especially at night. And so you got to be on your game. You've got to be paying attention. And folks, again, this is not about paranoia. This is about preparedness. So before, what if we were paying attention? What if we noticed that lady? Oh, wait, Tim, I got a three-year-old and a in a basket of groceries. Hey, before I'm going to walk out there, if I see her and I'm like, that doesn't look right, I'll take time to go back in and talk to a manager. Because in this case, 
she went ahead and, and I'm not blaming her in any stretch of the imagination. The problem is, is that she probably wasn't thinking in the way that you and I are talking about right now. She wasn't alert, aware and prepared because if she had been, maybe, maybe there's a chance that she would have seen, boy, this lady's weird and she's coming right at us, but I'll, apparently that didn't happen. So before we're alert, aware, but remember the alert and aware before also includes a plan. Now, now I want you to think about this. If she could have seen her coming with, now get it folks, with a knife in her hand coming, what could she have done? Oh, well, Tim, you know, what could she have done? Well, first off, let's move into the during In the during, if she'd seen her up front, could she use that shopping cart as distance while she's screening, screaming, keeping her three-year-old with her, using that shopping cart? I mean, to attack her, you can attack somebody with a shopping cart. And if you're scared and you've got adrenaline flowing, you maintain that distance because whether it's in a parking lot or on the subway, the most important thing with a knife is keeping the distance. You need to keep that person back and away because that edge, that blade will hurt you if it gets in close. Now, another good reason to, you know, go to my buddy, Matt Pascalini, and he teaches online self-defense because having a few, uh, just a few techniques right now in the middle of this could save your life. But for this lady, let, let's continue on. Maybe the cart can become a weapon. Maybe you can push it. Maybe you can scream, draw attention. Maybe you can really go into attack mode because she's only got so much distance that she can gain to get to you. But if you have a cart, a shopping cart, which we saw it overturn, groceries all over everywhere, maybe if she was alert and aware, she could have used that cart to keep that person away long enough to get help because make no bones about it. If you don't catch it early, you're in the middle of a fight for your life and and your child's life. And now you're screaming and now you're doing everything that a mama bear does to protect your, your child. And and my heart breaks for her. This is not in any way condemnation. Please don't take it that way. It's the opposite. My heart breaks. The other thing is, if you're screaming, yelling, she's got a knife, she's trying to kill me, people are going to call police. And, and maybe in Ohio, there's an armed citizen that can take care of this problem. Uh, Just for the record, uh, in all 50 states, if someone is exercising deadly force against someone else and they're not law enforcement and there's no legal reason for it, you can take reasonable action to stop them. Well, what would you do if you were walking out to your car and saw this wild, crazy woman with a knife attacking an innocent woman and her child? What would you do? Well, folks, I hope on this channel, It's stimulating some thought. We know training special ops. We know training secret service agents. We know training law enforcement officers. 90% of what you need when those split seconds counts is right here. And that's a mental plan. The way you gain that mental plan is by constantly asking, what would I do if this happened? And then having skills and physical fitness to execute your plan. And you may say, well, Tim, you know, I've heard this a lot. Uh, I'm older. I can't. And, and we, you've heard this from me. You're right. If you say I can't, you can't. Just hide. But if you say, no, I can. I can and I will make a difference. You can. You will make a difference. It's up to you. So during the event, we're trying to keep her away. Well, I'll tell you what, if I had, you know, a Second Amendment right in that situation, Um, that could also end a problem very quickly. Because remember, sometimes uh, violence is the only answer. None of us like it. I had a conversation earlier uh, with a person who said, Tim, I just can't bring myself to want to hurt or kill another human being. I understand that. I wonder if that would change if they were attacking your family. Would you let evil 
do what they're doing these days without standing and protecting others. I would say most of you, if not all of you, would say, yeah, you know, in that circumstance, I would. So, okay, we talked about the before, being alert, being aware, hopefully identifying her before she ever gets close to that precious mom and her her son and calling 911, maybe even engaging, yelling, screaming, running inside, grabbing help, because she's, remember, she's walking around with a knife in her hand. The police arrested her with a knife in her hand. And quite frankly, um, after what she did, the police likely had probable cause or, you know, more than probable cause to take um, deadly force actions on her. Uh, I don't know the circumstance of the arrest. If she did comply immediately, put the lie on, then she should have been arrested. But if she did not, then that would have been another case for officers um, to legally use force, the force required to stop her. Apparently that was not uh, the outcome. And now let's talk about the after. And this is really important, folks. Now you've got a child stabbed, bleeding to death. You've got a mom hurt, bleeding. You're there. You're calling 911. You're trying to communicate the description and direction of the suspect because the police need to get to her quickly. She likely is, is going to strike someone out. The, there was one report said she'd already stabbed another lady so th this is a woman on a rampage so we've got it we've got to get her stopped oh but by the way you've got two wounded people here now what do you do with that and if you say well you know i, I don't know what to do then great takeaway from this video go to your local fire department ask them when the next stop the bleed training is it's a three-hour program put together by the Department of Homeland Security. It teaches you how to apply tourniquets and pressure bandages, hopefully to decrease bleeding until paramedics can get there and give them life-saving uh, help. So have you had that training? Do you have a tourniquet or a, a kit in your car? Do you have CPR training? Because sometimes the trauma of incidents can cause people's hearts to stop. Do you know how to help them? If the answer is no, then that's a great takeaway for where we are today. And folks, the other thing is this, and I'm just going to say it um, because it needs to be said. You need to learn how to defend yourself. You cannot any longer rely on the police coming and saving the day. I have nothing but respect for police. I totally support the police. But right now, with all this craziness called defund the police, they can't get good candidates. They're short staffed. They feel very discouraged because in their eyes, they're just out there trying to do the job that you and I want them to do. But we've got a very loud, angry population. Fortunately, it's a small population, but they're criticizing every single thing in our government. And that's not by mistake, by the way. This is a direct uh, strategy to undermine the United States as a nation, all of our traditional values. And if you didn't listen to the, the video I did with what Paul Harvey predicted in 19, I think it was 68, um, you need to listen to that because everything he checked has happened and this doesn't happen by accident. And so, folks, what I'm saying to you, these kinds of incidents are going to continue occur, to occur in every country that's opened itself up to an influx of people. And I'm not saying all of them are that way. Please most come to make a better life for themselves, but there are, there's a way larger percentage than should be that are here to kill, steal, and destroy. That's the bottom line. They are not here to benefit from the America you and I love. They want to be part of whatever it is that's going to destabilize. And in some cases, it's criminal elements. I've talked to you on this channel about organized gangs coming right here. I've talked to you about terrorists being here. And, and folks, we just need to wake up. I don't know how else to say it. We need to wake up as a nation and recognize these threats are real. We train all over the country. We train organizations. We train nonprofits. We train schools, churches. 
One of the things I want to remind you of is when we think active violence, we think of weapons. Active violence can be with knives just as easily, and it can be even scarier. With weapons, you hear shots. With knives, you might hear screams, but the knives used by people um, that are filled with rage, anger, hatred, and evil can do a lot of damage. And that's what you saw in the case in Germany of um, the rally that was going on that the uh, the radical attacked. And I, I just want to remind you how quickly they happened. This was a normal day. Um, and let's take a look at this again. Normal day, person comes in with a knife. And now before we know it, we're in a fight for our lives. And folks, I got to tell you, if you have no training, no background, no mental plan, no skills, then you quickly become a victim. But I know you don't want to be that. I don't want to be that. I want to be a person that's ready and that's prepared. Um, I'm just going to remind us as I you know, kind of end this one. Um, when you think of what happened, my good friend Chuck Holton was on the scene in the kibbutzes where October 7th happened. And when we talked later that night, and he began to describe the horrors of what occurred that day, it is like it was a whole new level of evil, something I hadn't processed in my lifetime. I never, ever, ever, ever dreamed that evil would be so grotesque, so inhumane, that you could butcher children in a crib. In Ohio, it happened with a three-year-old. Now, I don't know what the ties are. I'm not suggesting this is terrorism-related, although we don't know what we don't know. So what we do know is this is a method of choice for terrorists, and we should be prepared. So what does that mean for you? Well, for you and I, it means very, very simply that we're going to have a plan. We're going to start training our mind to see. We're going to pay attention, be alert and aware when we see things that don't make sense. We're going to pause and, and, and really consider what that's about. We're going to learn what body language is. You know, we use that a lot in the Secret Service. Your body communicates an awful lot about your intentions. We know enough about body bombers. Uh, watching videos of their um, going into places and blowing themselves up. There are physical manifestations, body language cues that suggest pre-attack indicators. Well, that's something you can learn about. But then we move to the, okay, I want to be alert and aware, but what do I do if I see it? What's my plan? Well, it starts with you. You, wh Whatever level you're in right now, whatever stage of your life, work to get more fit, work to get more prepared. It, it, if you are fit, then really start training some defensive skills. Um, they, there are some programs that are really, nobody's trying to make you a Kung Fu master. They're teaching you fundamental self-defense. Matt does that a lot on his channel. And here's what I would say is those skills can benefit you just because, because you're moving your body, you're training your body, you're learning skill sets. Um, there's another attack video I have where, a, a crowd of police, um, Actually, let me say this to you. This is this is pretty cool. Watch. Guy stabbing a person or trying, and here come the police. Now watch what they do. He's going to try to swing wildly, but they wait. They wait until that knife goes by, and they, they rush him, and they take him into custody. Now, I'm not recommending this, guys, uh, just for the record. Fighting someone with a knife really requires skill, and obviously those officers were trained to do that. But the point is this, they could have sat and watched and waited for the person, you know, with the gun, but the guy had already stabbed people and they weren't going to wait and they were going to go ahead and take care of the problem, which was to get him in custody. So do you have any skill like that? Do you have anything that, you know, again, you're mentally, physically prepared, but do you actually have skill to do something? Well, now's the time. And then finally, you got to have the will. You can have mental preparation. You can have the skill, but you got to have the will. Let me tell you, be careful. Don't get involved in everything just because it's in front of you. Be careful. 
be wise. In this case, there's no doubt what was happening with this poor lady and her child. Now, I don't know if YouTube's going to let me get this out. I hope they will, because there's nothing graphic. There's nothing that suggests, you know, anything other than me trying to help people understand the growing danger and then to be equipped and prepared to do something about it. And by the way, um, as I say all the time, I, I'm fighting the algorithm battle. You know, I don't know if YouTube hates me or I, I don't know what the deal is, but I do know that many are saying they've been unsubscribed where they once were subscribed. So if you could help me, uh, we're going to be doing some cool things ahead. Uh, and I hope you're a part of it. I'll be doing more lives because many of you have said you'd like to ask questions about your personal home security, about when you travel, what things you should do. And I think I might be able to help you with some of that because um, that's my passion. That's what I'm about. So I hope and pray if you're new, like, share, subscribe. Um, if you're one of my subscribers, please resubscribe, like, share, comment because um, we need each other, folks. We desperately need each other. And I, I'm not trying to be critical, but there are a lot of people out here who are experts, but have never had the real life experience. Um, I, there are many that are talking about what you should do in this incident or that incident, but they've never been ever in an incident. They've studied a lot of incidents, which is commendable. But it's a little different when you've been there. It's a little different when you've experienced it. It's a little different when you can say, based on my experience, this is what you do. So I hope and pray this is helpful. Please like, share, subscribe. I do need you, please, to get this information. This was a precious young mom. So if you have, you know, younger families, please share this with them. Please let them know that if you have questions, ask me. I, I will do my best to give you the best um, and, and, you know, most um, uh, up-to-date answers that I can. Um, but the big thing is, folks, we got to own our insecurity. We, we can't let tragedies like this continue to happen. So I hope this is helpful. I hope and pray that you're staying safe out there. And I hope to see you next time. Until then, Stay safe and God bless you.